Hello, and uh, welcome to Architecture Corner. I'm in Offenbach together with Frank Thomas, and uh, can you introduce yourself? Well, my name is Frank Thomas. I'm a CTO for Application Services Europe for Capgemini. Thank you, Frank. Uh, we are here today to talk about cloud. Yeah. I saw in the reception here there was a report that saying that cloud is uh, really starting to move now. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, well, it's a cloudy day, so <laughs> it, it definitely is moving. And um, I, I think people are buying into the concept of cloud because they read a lot about it. They, they get informed about what the advantages could be of the cloud. But uh, uh, sometimes when I give a, a keynote on cloud, I always start with a, a song of Joni Mitchell, which is about, uh, the song is called Both Sides Now, it's a beautiful song. So you sing or you just no, play it? No, I play guitar. I, I, people advise me not to sing with, <laughs> with playing the guitar, so I, okay. I, will, I, will, I, will, I will not sing now. But the, the song, she sings in the song, it's a love song, and she says, you know, I've looked at, at clouds from both sides now, and it's cloud illusions I recall, I still don't know cloud at all. Mm -hmm. And I think it's such a beautiful song because I think it's a lot of, of, of resemblance to where our customers are at this moment in time because they, 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 they hear a lot about cloud. Some people advise them you need to go there because of the cost advantage. Some people need to go because it's a risk advantage mm -hmm. because you don't have to maintain your systems yourself but, but your cloud provider will. Some say it's about a agility advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, but also some people are really scared about, okay, but if I put my cloud on the data, is it secure? Will the, the American government... Uh, yeah, that's, that? a, that's so a big question, yeah. It's a big question. And we, we had a meeting in, in, in the United States last week, you know, and then AWS claimed, you know, I can put my data here in, 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 in Germany, in mm -hmm. Frankfurt, so they have two data centers somewhere over here. Yeah. So is my data over here, or can the American government still be there? And, and the answers are there, but the problem is nobody can give a real clear decisive answer and therefore people start mm. believing in their in their own stories i i think people worry too much about the american government there are so many other governments uh, in the world at least the american government they are operating under laws there is an intelligence court and they're not doing any random thing no i i totally agree a lot last year we had a very interesting uh, bit on uh, oligo our call center platform from delivered from the cloud and we, we won a large bid in a Dutch, uh, a Dutch governmental body, which was very, very uh, lucky because uh, one of the, the, the incubated player was, was the Dutch telco organization, the KPM. Um, and we won it. And, and, and during the bid phase, the CIO also said, you know, it's very scary because, you know, you are new in the Netherlands with this solution. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're a French company. Uh, and what scares me really is it's cloud-based. So now, you know, sh sh where is your data center? So we said, well, the data center is in France. Well, do we want to put our data outside of France? And then I thought, okay, you know, but at least it's in Capgemini. It's only the metadata of calls that we can see. Yeah. Uh, but you now have that KPN, the Dutch telco provider. So if, if somebody wants to really do damage, what's the first party in the Netherlands that they will look into? Mm -hmm. It's KPN. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's the perception that people have, which which makes them ask these questions rather than that they really look into the facts and the reality of daily life. It's interesting you mentioned the uh, phone company because isn't the phone network really the, the first and the most cloudy cloud service at all? Yeah, yeah basically. Because you make phone calls and, and you have no idea it goes through this network, that network. It's completely hidden to you. It's just phone call as a service. Yeah, but people don't think of that as cloud. And, and, and sometimes when I have a presentation, I also ask people, say, okay, who of you use LinkedIn? Who of you uses uh, uh, Twitter or Facebook? Mm -hmm. Who of you uses uh, Evernote? Who of you uses, you know, and you, you can go on with these kind of applications. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they're all cloud. Yeah, So you, you are using, in your professional life even, I think you're already using 40% of the time, mm -hmm. and perhaps 80% of the applications that you use are cloud but you, you are not aware of it that it's cloud-based. So there are these studies that show that uh, nine out of 10 cloud services that companies use are, are going not noticed by the, the IT department. Yeah. Especially marketing, they, they buy stock photo, for instance, cloud service. They exactly. buy yeah. <laughs> uh, media, media um, what do you call it? Watching the media, also cloud service. Yeah. But, but they, they don't think of it like that. They think of it like a business process. Outsourcing, basically. Yeah, 
and it, and it will even go further. Uh, one of the things I, I, I'm a I'm a big user of Asana, uh, which is uh, the, by Dustin Horowitz, well, the, the the guy who together with uh, with Mark Zuckerberg uh, started Facebook. He started now his own company to reinvent the email because he thinks mm -hmm. email sucks. By the way, most of the mail is in the cloud. Uh, but he thinks, you know, we need to reinvent it. And he invented Asana, which is some kind of a collaboration work tool. And mm -hmm. the fun part is when I started asking people in Capgemini even, a lot of those people are also using Asana. But it's cloud-based. And, mm -hmm. and what, what my opinion is, I, 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 we talk a lot about bring your own device, you know, and in certain companies that still is an issue, certain companies, you know, it's not an issue at all. I think we will go into an era where people will bring their own application. And where people can say, you know, I will buy this little piece. But but but, but it, it's been like that for a long time. That that you know, some people they use. Uh, it used to be that you you were a VI user and Emacs user. Exactly. And, yeah. and people would bring their own editor. Yeah, or, or 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 Excel. You know, the fun part is people are now scary that people in the business start buying a little bit of their own applications. But you know, Excel was the the main shadow IT solution that we used. And now mm -hmm. the only thing is we can buy even more advanced solutions for a couple of euros. So, so, we, so we, we, uh, we go to companies and we do this uh, work studies where we check all the IT landscape and we yeah. find they have 1,000, 2,000 applications, but that's not counting the Excel macros. If you, if, you would, if you would, then, then it would explode 10 times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I find that customers have very different levels of awareness of, of cloud. Some customers come and say, we want to buy as a service, so we're not involving the IT department at all. We just want to buy this service that we define like this from you. And then you, on the other hand, we have companies that come and say, yeah, we want to buy some cloud from you. How much diesel do you have in your tanks? Yeah. So it's completely different ends of the spectrum. One is really heavy on the, from the IT side and, and the others are completely on the business side. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I think the rule for us is to perhaps be the independent broker between the business and the IT side, because I, I think there's value in both of them. I think you, you can explore, and as an IT department, perhaps you, could, you should give an, an, uh, the catalog, the service catalog, from which people can then choose the services that they pick mm -hmm. because of the way that they used to do things, etc. My, my biggest concern still with this, this part is that you need to make sure that the integration piece uh, does not get lost out of sight. Uh, that's also what we saw happening when the business first started to buy their own IT. You know, they thought it was very cheap to buy a Salesforce application because you know they had a very good usability, looked good, good user interface, and 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 it was less costly. But then the IT got got stuck up with all the integration uh, piece, and then in the end, the business started complaining about the big uh, bill that they got from the IT department. Yeah, B being more proactive as an IT. Uh, department, but also as a, as a as an advisor to the business of what the art of the possible could be, could help prevent the big integration gap, which will start to become more and more emerging between the business and IT. And I think that that definitely is a role where we, and particularly the architects, could play a role. I think it, it's like taking the next step where we see the. Um, it's not really about integrations; it's about collaborations. Uh, because an integration between two different companies, it's. That, that's a collaboration as well. The, the IT part is, is a codification of that collaboration. I like that very much. Yeah. Normally I would say orchestration, but it's perhaps the codified collaboration. Yeah. So we have, I have my company, you have your company, and yeah. we're working together. But we don't have to, to go and visit each other every day because we, most of the things we're doing are quite stamped stuff. So we just send some IT messages, like one bank sending money to another bank. Yeah. I agree, and it comes back eh, to what we in Technovision call uh, the no requirements. Eh? So there, it, there, we hopefully will enter a phase where together we sit and we configure the stuff that we need on the fly. So I don't have to write a, a large piece of paper of 200 pages where all my requirements are, are being, uh, being written down. For me, you, you can only do that once you really have your, your, your basics uh, uh, solved. And mm -hmm. the question is, do the majority of our customers already have their basics in place? And I think that's something that we need to work on. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much. It was nice to have you here. And um, probably looking forward to meet you on another episode. Yeah, I'm really looking forward. And, uh, and hopefully uh, the clouds will get out of our way. We will adjourn a little bit more sun today. <laughs> but the clouds are good for the video because they, they make the light softer. D definitely. So it's already a benefit of the cloud. <laughs> yeah. Cloud is better for video.
Thank you. Thank you.